Welcome back. Former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki debuting her new show on MSNBC, Wasting No Time, Blasting Republicans. Watch this. For Republicans, wokeness is public enemy number one. By the sound of it, there is simply no greater threat to American liberty. Whether or not they actually believe it, they clearly think it's a winning message ahead of 2024. And it makes you think, are they onto something? Should I be freaking out about how right-wing Republicans are co-opting woke and wokeism? My gut here is no. The Republican crusade against wokeness may not be as potent of a campaign issue as they may hope. You can let your woke flag fly. Fox Across America host Jimmy Fela joins us now. Jimmy. You can let your woke flag there fly. There it is. Right there. She put it out for everyone. Well, first of all, congratulations to her for getting Luke Skywalker to lend her his Jedi costume <laughs> for episode one of the show. I mean, that's a big step when you get the Star Wars, you know, vote out of the gate. That was an aggressive move. I applaud it. So while she is in touch with the sentiments of America with the fashion, yeah. uh, her saying wokeness isn't an issue across the aisle demonstrates just how out of touch this administration happens yes, to be. Exactly. And it takes you look no further than Florida. When Ron DeSantis passed the Parental Rights and Education Act, he got the overwhelming support of parents on both sides of the aisle because a lot of the things we group under the umbrella of woke, it's kind of has become a catch all on the right, but it essentially means two things to us. One is incentivized grievance. We need right. to find injustice anywhere in the world, even if we're finding it in the way of arson, meaning we're lighting fires that don't need to be burnt. The other is indoctrinating kids into an ideology that nobody asked for. So she's wrong when she says that, but I'm not surprised she says that because MSNBC what has become group therapy for some really well-dressed people. Is this an <laughs> example of them or her actually getting really nervous about how well the woke thing is playing and it trying is. to sort of pre-bunk that in a way? It's got a lot of traction, and that's what I think it was. Because two, two of the jobs over there, okay, is one to tell the audience everything's going to be fine. That's a lot of what MSNBC is. Like Biden's fine, the border's fine, the economy's fine, as the banks are the banks collapsing. Are like, yeah, no, no, it's great. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be fine. Uh, yes, the other is they're trying to discredit these lines of attack that directly impact this administration because they've become the mascot for wokeness. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to get to this one. Favorite story today. I can't wait to tell my <laughs> kids. A new study, and this is a really scientific study, shows dad jokes might help kids develop into healthy adults, teaching them to deal with embarrassment and overcome awkwardness. Now, Jimmy, I know you don't know anything about embarrassment <laughs> and awkwardness, but you might be able to speak to the value of the dad joke. Well, here's the thing. This was clearly written by a guy with bad material. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, but you don't understand. There's a higher meaning to this. He's tired of bombing in the minivan, but he wants to make it seem like he's not the problem. It's the old blame the audience. Uh, there is a value in dad jokes and any jokes for the sake of we need to recognize escapism. What humor is there to do is take the power away from life's adversities for a few moments at a time. That's why I'm such an uh, ardent, you know, supporter of defunding the joke police. Mm. Okay, the guy on stage is trying to take the power away from that expensive mortgage payment or that climbing interest rate. The guy who's getting to the comedy club just to ruin that guy's life Right. Who's the villain here? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's teaching resiliency a little bit with some yeah. of these kids. It's right? a comedy is a buffet, okay? You see something you like, you throw it on the tray. If you don't like it, you don't argue with the chef. Everybody gets their own tray. You just keep on walking. You so I'm, do... I'm with dad joke, but I do think he needs to improve that. I just think there's a little competition between Brian and Neil Cavuto, whose dad jokes are, oh, are better boy. or worse. Oh. I, don't I, know. I oh, yield boy. in that contest immediately. <laughs> he is the master. I'm hey, the Padawan hey, learner. Hey, at least okay. you can do your material in front of kids. Kids, so I yeah. bow. I yeah. bow. <laughs> you mentioned buffets. Mm. Let's talk about this one. The Golden yep. Arches are feeling the pain of inflation. A new study showing that the average price for a Big Mac in the U.S. is now estimated at five dollars and fifteen cents. That's up twenty-two percent since before the start of the pandemic. You know what's wild? Mm -hmm. In Switzerland, it's seven. 75 for is Big that Mac? true? Yes. Is that true? Yes, it's so it's actually good in the US. Well, do you know in it's France wild. it's not a Big Mac, it's a Royale, Royale. with cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Just giving you my pulp fiction. Like That's the only <laughs> I couldn't hang with your depth of knowledge, so I had to take it to my area. Well, it's pulp fiction. Um listen, of all the issues we talk about, this is the kind of issue that really could impact a re-election campaign because McDonald's is universal. We're all yep. eating McDonald's. We may not be leaning in and saying so, but some of us on this set have been told 
told to stop eating McDonald's by the wardrobe department. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> it rhymes with Bimmy Kayla, uh, and he's always happy to be here. But this is an advantage, I think, even with a guy like Trump who loves McDonald's. Yeah. Make McDonald's great again? I think pops in a lot of subur suburban votes. Well, I you buy the meal or you throw in a soda and french fries, and all of a sudden the cost of your fast food is not what the cost of fast food is yes, supposed thank to be. Thank you. One more thing. Okay. This one just in. The... Um, uh, the French government, they were actually um, facing a no-confidence vote mm -hmm. over pension age. Mm -hmm. Your thought? Well, i got to be honest with you. The way Macron went about doing it clearly didn't sit well with the populace. But we're kidding ourselves if we don't take a proactive measure now, one way or the other, in tackling this problem head on. It is a wild liability. It has been looted by politicians for the, over the course of decades now. So anybody who wants to get out there as this pillar of virtue and be like, hands off Social Security, usually nine times out of ten they have crumbs on their shirt from dabbling in that cookie jar. Yeah. So I don't know to the specificity of what just happened in France, but I do know we as a country could take a lesson in at least doing something to address a problem that's only going to get worse. Jackie, I'll tell you, the French government has narrowly survived that no-confidence vote. It looks like they were about nine votes short of that no-confidence. Because mm. you know what? A couple guys were out eating a Royale Roy with cheese. <laughs> freedom exactly. fries. There it is. Freedom fries as well. Uh, thanks for dropping by. I miss you already. Good to Jimmy. see you. You guys.